it has not been pretty if you're a Golden State Warriors fan. All right. The Golden State Warriors are trying not to have a repeat of last year. The Warriors, if you guys want to hear, are the 18th ranked defense, 13th ranked offense. They have the 18th net rating. They're 13th in three-point percentage, 5th in three points made, 4th in three-point attempts. And they're the second best rebounding team in the league, 6th best in assists. But the thing is, is they have no rim protection. And they're turning the ball over like crazy. And whenever they play a team with someone like a big, like how we saw with like Chet Holmgren, it's it's bad. They don't have any size. They lack a rim protector. And they're a foul team. They're fouling a lot. They they have a bunch of fouls. And the thing with this team is that they foul at all costs approach creates an opposite, you know, approach. Now with I just it's not been great. So we saw with the, the Warriors on Friday's game, they controlled the majority of it. And Steve Kerr stood firm in his belief that this established starting line, which entered the night as a cum, you know, cumulative minus 25 net rating would, or box minus plus score, you would say, would correct itself. And it did. Clay Thompson and Andrew Wiggins looked like they were hitting jumpers. And the Warriors have a habit of letting opponents linger in games instead of you know going in for the kill early, one might say. And that's definitely something that has been a problem. Hopefully that wasn't too loud for you guys. But yeah, it has been a problem with this team. And the Warriors also have a turnover problem. The ball, they turned the ball over 29 times. It's the most ever in a Steve Kerr era and the most for the franchise since the 30 turnover night back in 2002. So they've had an obscene amount of turnovers. And Andrew Wiggins turned it over six times. Green had four. Thompson had four. Steph Curry had three. Kaminga had three. Saric had three. Brandon Podizemski had two. Moody had two. Kevon Looney had one. And there was one team turnover as a shot clock violation. So there were passes, you know, leading to nowhere. They had illegal screens. It's just messy. They had mindless moments in transition and were giving up possessions after possessions. And it's just these weird blunders that allowed the thunder to come back and it it's it's weird because if you go back to the end of the sacramento meltdown 10 days ago the warriors were up you know and it, they're blowing leads they're blowing leads they don't have the defense to stop it but it's not even that even if they have the defense they're just giving so many possessions it's after even if your opponent's playing like crap if you keep giving them second chance opportunities or you know more and more possessions it's going to be they're going to have a chance to come back and clay thompson who's you know been who you know had 22 points on 15 shots it was his fifth 20 point night in the last eight games he's starting to get his jumper back and it's 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 weird because this isn't an ideal situation for any of the teams involved so for me when i look at this i think okay what are they going to do how are they going to do it because without you know they've collapsed the thunder kings clippers and thunder again so those are four games they could be 14 and 8 instead of 10 and 12 and barkley said the the warriors cooked a few times early this season and that you know <laughs> i think it's definitely interesting to see how this team there's i think the the lack of size is big but there's no bigs out there that they can go out and get they're kind of handicapped basically if they're gonna make a move the warriors let's realistically talk about this we look at the warrior salary and we look at the trade candidates okay if we go back to all the guys who could be traded the warriors aren't trading clay they aren't trading steph they're not going to trace paul because paul's actually been good for them they can't trade Wiggins. They can't trade Green. They're not going to trade Gary Payton. They're not going to trade Kevon Looney. So that's like seven dudes they're not going to trade. Nor are they going to trade B Pod. So Pod, you know, Pod's not going anywhere. So that's eight dudes they're not going to trade. So Kaminga mixed with Moody is about 9.9. .9, and they're not going to trade Sarich. That's nine dudes. And they're not going to trade, you know, Guy Santos or Trace Jackson Davis. So really the only three dudes they're trading of is Moody, Podizemski, and Corey Joseph. All right, if we sit here and like package those three dudes, you're not gonna, we're, we're really not gonna have the world's m most money to work with. It's like $11 million they're going to have. And that's where it becomes hard to see like who 
they could go after because they need a big they need a big and i i don't see like a spencer dinwiddie roy so neil or you know Dorian Finney Smith being a sh an answer and the bigs around the league, like all the good ones are kind of being kept like Rashawn Holmes guys, not gonna, you need a rim protecting big. And it's not like somebody on the, you know, on the freaking Pistons is going to help them. They have a bunch of bigs, but none of those guys are really going to do anything. And if you look around the league, I mean, Bismack Biombo would have been a great signing. He's not available anymore. And for like $10 million, I mean, there's technically Daniel Gafford that they could talk about. There could be a guy, you know, maybe someone off of the Orlando Magic. And that's what we'll talk about right here. Because I don't see any, maybe if they want somebody off the Spurs. But then this, I mean, the Spurs realistically, yeah, yeah, that might be your best option. So let's go over the Spurs real quick. The Spurs, if you wanted, okay, big wise, who could you take who's a big? Charles Bassey? would be a great big he makes 2.6 okay and to do this deal i also think that like they would want to walk away the thing is is jetty osmond's not moving the needle for me nor is Devonte graham and doug mcdermott's just another shooter he would be cool but a big old deal that like i would really like is and i know this is just them going out and kind of maybe being lateral about this but if they can go out and get themselves guys that they know that'll fit their system and it's risky but if you send let's for example okay we're gonna go over here and we'll send jonathan kaminga's probably best fit would be with the raptors moody seems like a spurs guy and you send Corey joseph to the spurs i think money wise you would be able to do this deal yeah this deal would work monetarily and it's pretty everybody kind of stays the same nothing insane in my opinion right here where you look at this deal where nobody's outright like winning crazy but what do you guys think of this one it's on the screen now so auto porter and charles bassey to the warriors moses moody and Corey josephs to the spurs and then Jonathan Kaminga. Now, I think like uh, we're overvaluing Bassey right here. Like, I think some picks would have to go to the Warriors, like second rounders at least, for what they're giving up. But, like, in theory, yeah, I think the Raptors would have to give up like several second rounders. So would the Spurs. But in, in theory, this isn't a terrible trade. So, what are your guys' thoughts there? Um, what would you guys do? What is wrong with the Warriors? And how would you fix them? But yeah, that's the video for today, guys. Hope you guys did enjoy.